So can you tell me a little bit more about the landscape of complementary and integrated medicine when you were appointed the OSHA Center's founding director at the turn of the millennium and how that evolved during the 10 years while you led the OSHA Center? Well, in the 1990s, it was still totally uncharted territory. It was the dark side of the moon. <clears throat> Until the New England Journal article appeared, nobody was aware of how much the American or global public were using these therapies all the time. By the time the second article appeared in JAMA in 98, it was pretty much established that there was a de facto other healthcare system that warranted attention. When the data were used by Congress to set up the Office of Alternative Medicine, and schools around the country were beginning to take interest in this, UCSF led with the creation of the first Osher Center, courtesy of Bernard and Barbara Osher. And I was invited to speak there in 1998. And I congratulated them on their extraordinary gift that they were being unleashed to rigorously explore all of these therapies. And their dean at the time, Haile DeBoss, felt that this was the responsibility of conventional orthodox mainstream medicine to understand what was happening. How were patients using these therapies? Did they work? Were they helpful, harmful? What were the mechanisms? What could be contributed to medical science clinically and scientifically? And I left that meeting um, feeling as though the world would be better with a center devoted to this scientific exploration. I think that's when Mr. Osher met me for the first time. Fast forward a year or two, <clears throat> Mr. Osher decided to do a similar thing at Harvard, explored that with me and Dan Fetterman and the Dean Joe Martin, who knew the UCSF leadership. And we agreed to create a center of excellence at Harvard. But these were times when all of this was uncharted. We didn't know the epidemiology. We didn't know the clinical implications. We had no science to back it up. And the thought was, how can we create structures within respected medical institutions to distinguish real from imagined, to distinguish helpful from harmful, and all with the goal of creating better care for patients and contributing to the medical literature at the time. So that's where we were in the turn of the century at the beginning. 